someone call the ambulance There's gonna be an accident I'm coming up on infrared There is no running that can hide you I This is another bunch of shots that we did which represent to us what we call the death of Nancy Boy which is kind of, I think, kind of how we felt about this record, that we felt this record was quite a, quite a departure for us. And this is actually taken in Studio 2 of Rack, where we did most of the album. And it basically involved um, getting my friend Steve, who's a drag queen, to come to the studio, and then we bludgeoned him to death with a guitar. Quite morbid, of course, but it's kind of a form of catharsis for us, I suppose to sort of kill what you're most famous for. I was alone, falling free, trying my best not to forget what happened to us, what happened to me, what happened as I let it slip. I was confused by the powers that be Forgetting names and faces Passers-by were looking at me As if they could erase it Record is gonna, it's gonna be a while before people hear it, before there's a response from that. And you, in your mind, artistically, you may be already, you know, a year ahead or, you know, or in a different place artistically as soon as this record's come out because you've made something, you know, and then it's done, it's done, there you go, you know, move on. But with live, it's kind of a physical rush of collective euphoria and an emotional exchange between a small group of people and a much larger group of people. So you can imagine when it's going really, really well, what we get back. And sometimes you feel the adrenaline rush, you know, just rising up from your belly through to your chest, you know, and you really think you're going to pass out. Sometimes I, I, I see songs in colors. I think it's called kinesthesia. I can hear a song and I can go, well that sounds purple to me, or that sounds brown to me. That's, in that sense, yes, I can, I can kind of see something visual. But not like, uh, you know, I'm imagining, you know, uh, the asteroid coming to <laughs> smash up planet Earth, and that's the power of this chord kind of thing. That's probably Mike Oldfield, that one. And that's probably Phil Collins. Oh. For real, it's not the actual album. No, it's not the actual album, no. It's just... That one's got like three songs on it, yeah? And that one's got... Well, that one could be, because that's got four, no, five. They stopped doing the, uh, the actual vinyl, they only do CDs these days. The thing is, you can, you can go to this manufacturer, you can have them make one for you, although they're not even in the band who sold a hundred thousand records. Initially, it does start and stop with your records. That's what you are, essentially. That's why people come and see you live, because they want to hear those songs, but those songs have affected them from the record. The live thing's just an, another side of what, what happens when you do that kind of job, I suppose. Um, it's just amazing that you can draw audiences f all around the world. I think we've had nothing but sold-out gigs for the last eight years all around the world, no matter what size. You know, also, you know, this band, they can do 20,000 in France, they can do... 15,000 in England, you know, we'll do, first time we went to South America recently, you know, the first time in Chile, we're doing 10,000 a night for two nights. It's our first gig there. It's not 250 people, it's 10,000 people, you know, for two nights. And the fucking place is going mental. We've never been there before. Um, we can't hear ourselves because the audience is singing the words back. And none of them speak English. What the fuck's that about? I think what I've been trying to do more and more so since Without You I'm Nothing, our second album, is to try and express the core emotions of, of, of what it is to be alive. The sense of, uh, of feeling lost, you know, the sense of trying to find an identity, a uh, sense of confusion, um, falling completely in love, you know, 
um, falling out of love, uh, being hurt, yeah, um, being disappointed with yourself. Um, but I, what I've been trying to do is, is to try and refine that, uh, you know, at, w with each record and, and try and say, to try and say it in, in, in more and more simple ways, you know, in more and more direct ways. And I don't know if this makes any sense. I think to a, cer to a certain degree, perhaps the songwriting has gotten a little bit more sophisticated, but what's coming across is, is more simple. I've been trying to use less words to communicate grander themes. Stroke. I reacted against a, a great deal of things, you know, in order to sort of to end up where where I am today, you know. And I guess you know it all starts with childhood, you know. I mean, we could spend days and days and days, I think, sort of getting to the real nitty gritty of it all, you know, as far as the way that you react against your upbringing and your parents uh, in order to become the person that you are today. Two things which I reacted against as a teenager was the evangelical church and Jesus Christ and then I wanted to prove as well to you know to my father I guess that you know that there was that there was a future in this I just knew that at some point I would be on the stage and for a long long time it was I was as an actor in my mind but when I was like 16 I started to play guitar and that started to become much much more important in my life but I don't know if it's just silly if it was just blind faith, childhood dreams, and you know, or just you know, necessary delusion, you know, that, that kind of brought me to that point where you just tell yourself continuously that you you know it's going to happen. And uh, so, in in those terms, we what you said about is doing as you said about as you, as you get older is like burning bridges behind you so that you, there is no way back, you know, so that you have no other choice than to then the kind of.